Let's solve a PSLE Math 2024 question today. Tina had a total of 97 small and large magnets at first. What do we know from this sentence? We know that Tina had two types of magnets, small ones and large ones. Besides that, we're also given the total number of magnets that she had. How many is that? Yes, 97 magnets. However, we don't know how many small magnets Tina had or how many large magnets she had. Let's try to draw the model based on what we know so far, alright? Let's draw two bars. One bar to represent the number of small magnets and another bar to represent the number of large magnets. Some of you might be wondering, why is this bar longer than this? Well, this is only temporary since we don't really know which type of magnet Tina had more of, but that was a good question to ask. We'll adjust this later as we go along. Since we know the total number of magnets, we're going to put 97 here. So far so good? Let's see what we're given next. She gave away four small magnets, and bought some large magnets. Okay. We've got another clue. What happens to the number of small magnets Tina had after she gave four away? Yes, the number of small magnets would decrease. Tina would have fewer magnets. Great job if you got that. Then what about her large magnets? She bought some large magnets. This tells us that she should have more large magnets. Both the number of small magnets and large magnets changed. Oh no. I know this math problem may be starting to sound confusing to some of you, but stay with me, okay? We'll continue to work through this together step by step, and you'll see how this problem is actually quite solvable in the end. In the next part, we're given that the number of large magnets increased by 50%. For you guys who are about to faint when you see this percentage appearing, don't faint yet. Let's make it simpler for you by thinking of this as half instead. This makes it much easier to draw the model. What we drew earlier on was the model to describe the before situation. This was before Tina gave away the four small magnets and bought more large magnets. Now, we're going to focus on the after situation. How would you draw the model to represent the number of small and large magnets in the after situation? Let's start with the small magnets. Tina gave away four small magnets. Since we already know that she's going to have fewer small magnets, we can draw a bar that is shorter than this. This part represents the four small magnets that she gave away. What other information do we know? We know that the number of large magnets increased by half. Let's draw an extra part over here. If this is half of this, it means that we can split this part equally into two. This is how many large magnets Tina had at first. When she bought more large magnets, her number of large magnets increased by half. So far so good? Do we have any more clues about this math problem? We're given that Tina had a total of 114 magnets in the end. So let's label 114 at the side over here. Awesome! Now that we have a nice model all drawn out, it's much easier to understand the problem. Let's look at the questions and see what we're supposed to solve. How many large magnets did Tina have in the end? How would you find the answer to the first part? Let's look at the before and after models that we've drawn. We have the total number of small and large magnets for both situations, but how can we compare them? Let's see what we can do to the models to make them as similar as possible, okay? Let's start with the small magnets. We know that the number of small magnets in the end is less than the number of small magnets at the start by 4. 
This means that we can use a part of this bar at the start to represent the four small magnets that she gave away. Are you still with me? Then, we'll look at the large magnets. We've split this into two equal units earlier on. This means that this same bar at the start can be split into two units too. Here's where the magic happens. Let's look at the before model. When we subtract 4 from 97, we get 93. This means that this part, plus these two units, gives us a total of 93 magnets. Now, when we compare the before and after models, do you see the same parts appearing in the second model? We have the same part, and the two units over here as well. Since these represent 93 magnets, we can subtract 93 from the total of 114 to find how many magnets one unit stands for. One unit represents 21 magnets. How many large magnets did Tina have in the end? To answer that, let's find the value of these three units. When we multiply 21 by 3, we get 63. Did you get that? Tina had 63 large magnets in the end. Now that we've solved the first part, we can solve the second part quite easily as long as we do things step by step. Did Tina have more small or large magnets at first? How many more? Let's look at our first model. Since we already know how many magnets one unit stand for, it's easier to find how many large magnets she had at first. Let's find how many magnets these two units represent. 21 times 2 is 42. Tina had 42 large magnets at first. Is this number more or less than the number of small magnets she had at first? Although the bar that represents the small magnets looks longer, don't forget that this is what we assume at the start when we drew this model. Now that we're so close to the answer, let's do the math to confirm if this is true. Let's subtract 42 from the total of 97. Did you get 55? That's how many small magnets Tina had at first. Did Tina have more small or large magnets at first? Yes, she had more small magnets at first. Don't forget to answer the second part of the question. To find the difference in the number of small and large magnets, we can subtract 42 from 55. This gives us an answer of 13. Did you get that?